Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hungarian track guide and setup. Well, this time uh, it's gonna be the last track uh, that we are doing before we catch up to the real life Grand Prix series. So let's give it all for Hungary. One of the few tracks where Danny Rick actually had a uh, good results in his career as well, and we'll throw give it a throwback with that in the V Cup, and let's get into it real quick. But very quickly before that. Uh, thank you to all channel members and subscribers for supporting the channel in your own way and uh, yeah let's get into the hot lap real quick right now so to begin your lap and to end it it's almost the same actually uh, but if you're starting your hot lap you can actually take a wider line than i'm doing here to get a straighter exit and carry a little bit more speed down the pit straight that's going to help you to gain a little bit more time on this straight but you can keep it in 7th gear all the way and you want to be spotting that 100 meter board and that white line on the track break after that and then be tight on the entry and start picking up throttle a little bit and let the car run wide open up DRS and bring the car over to the right hand side again and then now prepare for the next left hander here look for that 50 meter board and go over the curb a little bit on your right uh, this helps to open up the entry to the left hander stay tight here without touching that concrete part of the curb and then uh, be careful while accelerating out of it there's a little bump there as you can see and just uh, follow the line just let the car flow naturally through there and now here uh, before the end of sector one you want to make sure you are in the middle of the track because the track here as you can see it turns a little bit to the right before it goes to the left spot that curb or that black board and turn in right after that with a quick downshift to sixth without needing to break that much and now you're quickly back to the left hand side of the track spot the end of the curb on the right hand side or the black box on the left and uh, just about when you're about to reach that downshift to fifth or fourth gear with a little bit of braking and let the car run wide again on the exit to carry all the speed through and now we arrive at the chicane uh, look for the start of the curb and now on the entry for the first part uh, take a little bit of this curb without taking too much first uh, but yeah apply a little bit of throttle and immediately turn left and avoid that race part of the curb but you can take a little bit of that flatter red and white curb accelerate out of this quickly keep it in a straight line spot that 50 meter board or that overhead hanging rope between the two poles that's going to be your turning in point and on the entry stay tight to the left avoid that concrete part again and once you're in the middle of the track uh, just lift a little bit take a little bit of the inside curb and let the car run wide again keep it tight to the left and now we arrive at the next corner here uh, look for the start of this curb you want to take the curb a little bit to help you to open up the right hander uh, even if you don't take it it's okay but you know every little bit helps on the exit there you go uh, it's easy flat there and now at the end of sector two break before the curb starts break a little bit early and this will help you to uh, carry a good amount of speed and take a bit of the inside right curb so that you can straighten out the car much quicker on the exit and this will help you to gain at least half a tenth easily here by doing that and now the next second to last corner here after the dhl board or as you reach that black box on the top right uh, that's where you're going to be braking just mal tap on the brakes you don't need to be 100 percent on the brakes stay tight to the left as much as you can but avoid that concrete part of the curb again let the car run wide and bring back over to the left hand side for the final corner spot that marshall pose on the left hand side or that black box uh, right as you're about to pass it or after you pass it turn right stay tighter on the right on the entry but you know sometimes you can run wide as well uh, but there you go that is a lap around hungary uh well i wouldn't say it's my favorite track but i love to drive around this track because it's so technical and it's it's a challenge right uh, when you nail all those sequence of corners carry speed from corner to corner it's so beautiful to drive and to help you with that, uh, we also have a setup. 
that's going to help you to be uh, carrying the speed. We have two setups actually, one from myself and one from Mavis, who's been helping us out in the recent days. 50-50 wings, there's no question about it. In the dry, in the wet, it's the same. Transmission, you can use 100, you can use 90 as well. In some corners, in the longer corners, if you get a little bit of understeer on the exit. Off throttle, you can use 10% for qualifying and you can go up to 20 or 25 for the race. And engine braking, keep it at 100%. You can drop it to 90% if you're really struggling with um, locking up under the braking. But I wouldn't say it's going to make too much difference. So yeah, try that out first. Minimum geometry as usual. This, uh, this is the fastest way to set up the car. And you just have to drive around it to get used to it. And now suspension. Uh, very quickly, because we are running 50-50 wings, there's not much front downforce generated relative to the rear, right? So we need to generate more rear rotation in this. Um, and you can achieve that through the suspension. The first step uh, that I did is um, using 21-21 anti-roll bars. Uh, 21 on the front keeps the rear very stiff uh, and stable. 21 on the rear allows the rear to rotate as much as possible. You can soften the front even more to give you a little bit more reactivity on the front. It makes the car more agile and it's easier to get the car turned in, but it's going to make the car a little bit unstable. So just be careful with that if you're going to soften it, right? Uh, but you don't want it too soft. Um, maybe minimum you should go is 10, but not less than that. And then we arrive to the suspension and ride height where you can also make a little bit of uh, adjustment. So around the 35, 36, 37 range is where I feel the car is um, soft enough to turn, but not too soft where it's going to be unstable. Uh, at the same time, you can lower the ride height to around 18, maybe 17, but I prefer 18 here. Uh, you can go up to 20 if you need a little bit of stability. Uh, but if you go lower, like 15, 16, definitely more rotation can be found, more front downforce will be generated, but you will bottom out on the curbs. Similarly, for the rear, rear ride height at 55 allows the rear to generate a lot of downforce. You can go down to 50 um, or anywhere in between. The lower you go, the more potential downforce is generated but it's easier to bottom out. And the lower you go on the right height, the stiffer you need to have your rear suspension at. So keep it around 55 to 60 or 65, whichever you prefer. Um, if you're going up to 65, then you can soften your front. Uh, if you're going rear right height at 65, let's say, you can soften your rear suspension to one or two, for example. But if you're running like what I'm doing, you can run it in the range of 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I found to be just nice with 55 rear right height. So you can try this out first. This is going to help you to rotate the rear a lot. And at the same time, it's going to stop you from bottoming out on the curbs. We move on to the brakes, 100% pressure. And brake bias, to be honest, it's all about personal preference. Uh, 53, 54, 55, everything can work, whichever you prefer in any corner. So I'll keep it at 53 to start off. If I had locking up the wrist, well, go up, go up on it. And maximum tire pressures for the qualifying, for the race, and even in the wets because the tires overheat quite a lot and max pressures reduces overheating in this year's game. And there you go, that is the first setup. And let's talk a little bit about the wet setup. You know, I don't really touch much about this, but let's say you need to, you know, drive this setup for the wets. All you need to do is raise the right height to 20 and 60. So plus two on the front, plus five on the rear from whatever you're running. Adjust the brake bias if you need to and run a little bit of off throttle to keep the car stable and reduce the on throttle. So it's a little bit easier to go on throttle without inducing too much understeer on the exit. Uh, that's the only thing that you can change with this <laughs> when you're already running 50-50 wings. Let's get to this second setup here provided by Mavis. Once again, thank you and shout out to him uh, for being such a kind person helping us out with this. 50, 42 wings, so uh, a little bit of a more conventional setup here, more front wing than the rear wing. So this is gonna help you to get a lot more front downforce compared to the rear. 
uh, easier to overtake and easier to defend on the straights. That's definitely a benefit of this. And uh, if you want to run it a little higher, up to you as well. Uh, but because of more front down force against the rear, you need to run a little bit more off throttle. So about 25% is good. And for the race, you can go up to 30 or 35. Uh, both are equally good. So I didn't find any difference in that. Uh, minimum geometry is the same and suspension there is minor difference here uh, because again you have more front wing compared to the rear you need the front to be predictable so you need to stiffen up the front suspension to 41 and uh, rear suspension is a little bit softer because there's less rear downforce so softening the rear helps you to keep the car a little bit more stable and rear anti roll bar has been reduced to 19 uh, that's to make sure the car doesn't over rotate uh, since you already have more front wing anyway and then uh, ride height is just again personal preference with your front suspension 23 front ride height uh, with extra front wing uh, is just a way to keep the car stable and uh, since the rear suspension is at 4 um, you can play around with the rear ride height up to 60 65 works just well and my other specialty for the brakes 99% uh, which I like it in the rain and uh, even in intermediate conditions. So 98, 99% brake pressure works really nice in the rain to stop the car from locking up even in a straight line. Uh, that's that's something I struggle with in the rain right now. So probably brake pressure will help. And brake bias, personal preference once again. And tire pressures are also the same. So there you go. That is the second setup for Hungary. Hope you enjoy this track guide, you find some more lap time and you enjoy the setups. I'll see you next time in the Americas. Take care, goodbye.